Now we turn to the work of on the only conceptualist who received wide fame and recognition among the readers. This is Vladimir Sorokin, who was born in 1955. Indeed, this is a writer who realized the dream of Leslie Fiddler and Umberto Eco about bridging the boundaries between mass and elite literature. In his texts, one can find features of conceptualist research on the boundaries of fiction and more broadly of art. And one can also find, if not entertaining literature, uh, at least literature, but at least literature capable for capturing the reader, making a strong emotional impression on him. The main milestones of Vladimir Sorokin's biography are generally few in number and not very interesting. He studied in the chemical uh, institute, but rather early joined the circle of Moscow conceptualists. He initially worked as an illustrator, and by the way, he at first had to illustrate second-rate socialist realist writers. And apparently from these two sources, from familiarity with conceptualism and social, socialist realism, uh, his manner was born, which was very clearly formed already by the end of the 70s, by the time he wrote his first collection of short stories, which received the title The First Saturday Work Day. Sorokin himself later recalled that this book was supposed to resemble uh, the most ordinary thing, a book published in a provincial pub publishing house. And uh, the plots of this book are really the most typical subjects of late socialist realism. The technical university students make a wall newspaper. Two teams of woodcutters compete among themselves who will sow the most logs. High school students are going to picnic with their beloved teacher. The war veteran tells the war story starting with tobacco pouch, which he somehow acquired uh, during the war. Uh, there is an ecological theme, of course, and the theme of memory of the fallen and so on. In general, all these themes were endlessly repeated in the late socialist realism fiction. In such stories, there must be mentors and students without this socialist realism does not exist at all. They were teaching their readers uh, in general. And in the middle, uh, or near the end of uh, each of these stories, an unmotivated sudden change occurs. The narrative begins as a typical story written by the second-rate socialist realism writer, provincial member of the Union of the Soviet Writers, and then it abruptly breaks off. And in the place of logical continuations comes terrible violence or elements of the obscene or disintegration of language. This is the text, that is, the text disintegrates before us into atoms. And instead of the usual speech, the characters begin to express themselves at first in vague sentences and then, as in one of the early texts of Sorokin, can follow several pages with the letter A only, written continuously. This is like the cry of the character who no longer has anything to say. That is before us is the break up of the art form which has exhausted itself, which was repeated without end and turned into clichés. Let's consider an example to make uh, it more understandable. This is a short story from the collection of short stories, The Third Saturday Work Day, which is called The Opening of the Hunting Season. It is a typical socialist realism story on an ecological theme. There are two main characters, the old huntsman or ranger Kuzma and a young man, a student from the city called Sergei. They walk together uh, in the forest and discuss how the ecological situation is gradually deteriorating, how diverse breeds of animals are becoming fewer and fewer and so on. And finally they reach the place where they need to light an ambush and wait for some animal an elk probably who should come out to them here. 
In order to lure the object of their hunt, they hang bait on a spruce tree, but in this case it's not some sort of food. On the spruce hangs a tape recorder, from which sounds a hoarse voice of Vladimir Vysotsky. This is the first uh, strange thing, and then the incredible happens. Um, in the forest there appears a certain visitor, a hiker. Naturally he is interested what a strange thing uh, things are happening here. He approaches this tree and the hunters kill him with two shots from their guns. And then the old huntsman cuts out the liver of these tourists and, as is, it is customary among the hunters, first offers uh, this steaming raw liver to the young one, to his comrade, pronouncing the ritual phrase. They are congratulating each other with the opening of the hunting season. Who is before us? This is the destruction of totalitarian Soviet discourse. In this case I purposely take a weak example, so as not to uh, intimidate, to frighten listeners. And not only the laws of this genre were violated, uh, all the laws and characteristics of all socialist realism are violated. Uh, the problem is that in this trend there were certain blind zones, something absolutely forbidden, banned once and for all. Soviet socialist realism could not show sexual acts, socialist realism generally avoided any phys physiology, uh, any corporality, any appeal to corporality. The typical character of socialist realism consists, as it were, not of the heart, uh, kidneys, liver and so on, but consists of ready-made ideas uh, of ideology. Sorokin turns it all upside down. He turns his characters into a real living people and in place of socialist values there appears, as it were, this corporality, something that had never been described and could not be described in the socialist realist fiction. Something like this happens not only in the stories, but also in Sorokin's novels. Let's take as an example the novel Marina's 30th Love which was also written in the late Soviet times in the early 80s. Before us is a character who can be called marginal in all respects. 30-year-old beautiful Marina is at the same time a lesbian, a dissident and a thief. The latter for her is well combined with the dissidents. She hates the Soviet power, she hates ordinary people, proles as she calls proletariat after George Orwell. Uh, she is a stranger to everyone. The novel is firstly dedicated to a description of her loves, um, 29 of her lesbian loves, serenity is very characteristic for conceptualism. I described uh, one after another until she finally finds herself. And she finds herself through a love for a man, indeed in love with the party organizer of the factory. Uh, who performs the father's functions for her. And at the end, after she finds herself in this union, she is reborn and turns into a character of the classical socialist novel. Marina loses even her name, only her surname Alexeyeva remains in the text. Uh, then she joins the Soviet story, she works with her friends, her girlfriends at the factory, she makes a wall newspaper together with them, and then the last 20 to 30 pages of the novel transform into a monolithic, monological text which resembles the editorials of the main party newspaper Pravda, in which there is only uh, no, there is not only Marina, but there is no longer a subject of the narration. Uh, that is, everything de degenerates into official Soviet discourse. Such experiments on the transformation of socialist realism into physiology, naturalism and vice versa are very numerous in the works of early Sorokin. He plays with all the genres of Soviet discourse, experiments, explodes, explodes the conditions of existence and the boundaries of these texts. 
But even then it was clear that the object of deconstruction in Sorokin's novels and in his other texts was not only, not only uh, the socialist realism. In the mid-80s Sorokin wrote a novel called Roman. Uh, and there is a triple pun in this title. Firstly, the title of the book Roman means in Russian a novel, simply a novel. Secondly, is the designation of the genre of his book. And thirdly, the main character of the novel is a person, a man named Roman. Throughout nine tenths of this text, we read a classical novel of the 19th century written in Turgenev's, Ivan Turgenev's manner. The, character drink tea, the characters drink tea on the veranda of their estate and discuss the future of uh, Russia. And at the very end of this text, the main character, Raman, is given an X on his wedding. He receives a present on his wedding, the X. And the last 10 to 15 pages um, are, descri are devoted to the scenes in which Raman destroys one after another all the characters of the novel, and the text sounds more and more jerky. Uh, an example quote. On the edge of the stove lay Peter Garochov. Roman took his hand and pulled him. Peter Garochov fell from the stove. Roman hit him on the head with the axe. Peter Garochov did not move. And so on. In the end, phrases are reduced to uh, the sentences of the subject and predicate. Uh, all, and they all end with the one phrase. Roman is dead. That is, means novel is dead. Roman, the hero, died. Uh, the main character of this text uh, does not exist anymore. And at the same time, the novel died in the classical understanding of literature of 19th and 20th century. Sorokin certifies the death of literature.